Now to the Terriers of Scotland. We shall begin with the oldest of the Scotch Terriers, the Skye. The existence of a long, low terrier indigenous to the western islands of Scotland, particularly Skye, has been documented since the 16th century. His length of body and muscular legs gave him the ideal physique to hunt badgers. However, his wonderful coat, described as showing neither face nor body, also gave him great appeal as a pet. It was Queen Victoria who really made the sky popular when one became her beloved companion a century and a half ago. The Sky Terrier appeared in the first English stud book. His long, glamorous coat makes him unique in the terrier show ring to this day. Structurally, the Sky Terrier has not changed dramatically during the 150 years he has developed as a show dog. His height has always been 10 inches, but his length, from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail, has an actual measurement in today's breed standard of 41 and a half inches. His head is long and his jaws are strong. However, the Sky Terrier has unique ears, which can be either prick or drop. When prick, they are particularly beautiful because of their graceful feathering. When drop, they must hang completely straight with no lift upwards from the skull whatsoever, so they lie flat and close in the front. The coat is very important as this is the most unique feature of the Sky Terrier. It must be a double coat, a soft woolly undercoat with an outer coat that is hard in texture despite its length. It must also be straight, flat and free from curl. The Sky comes in a variety of self colours but shading of the same colour is common. His black points, nose and ears make his expression extremely appealing. Somewhere between the Sky Terrier and this, the Yorkshire Terrier of a century ago lay the now extinct Clydesdale or Paisley Terrier. His crowning glory was his magnificent fine silky blue coat without undercoat. Despite recognition by the Kennel Club, constant bickerings between the Clydesdale Terrier fanciers led to this breed's complete demise. The origin of today's Scottish Terrier lies in the less mountainous country to the east of Scotland. Formerly called the Aberdeen Terrier, he was also known as the Hard-Haired Scotch Terrier. Two centuries ago, the Scotch Terrier was a generic name for a diverse looking array of terriers who developed in isolated districts of Scotland and were selected purely on their working ability and not on their looks. So the name Scotch Terrier should not be confused with the modern name of this breed, the Scottish Terrier. These cobby little dogs with short, stout legs, harsh coats and long heads and muzzles for the size of the dog developed into the forerunners of today's Scottish Terrier. 
It was with the advent of dog shows that the Scottish Terrier underwent a dramatic change. Let's now watch him progress into the character recognised throughout the modern world as the Scotty. The Scotty has always been short-legged and of suitable size to go to ground. At first, like the Sky Terrier, the Scotty's body was long as well as long. But over the century and a half of his development as a show dog, his general appearance has become much more thick-set. The development of his coat has added to this impression because the more profuse the coat became, the more it was subjected to trimming and sculpturing. This not only exaggerated the Scotty's appearance of lowness to ground, but also exaggerated his length of head, which has always given the impression of being long for the size of the dog. The remarkable power of the Scotty in small compass, however, lies in his hindquarters and body. His body became shorter and appeared shorter still as time went by due to the tail becoming higher and higher set. However, the most dramatic change was in the rib cage which has become deeper and deeper over time until the modern breed standard demands it be actually hung between the forelegs. This footage was taken in the early 1950s when this Scotty was winning major awards at dog shows. Additionally, at this time, the Scotty was a most popular pet. Today, the Scotty has a head that gives the impression of being long for the size of the dog. The skull is nearly flat and the foreface strong. The ears are neat, of fine texture and set on top of the skull but not too close together. He moves with a smooth and free gait with great drive from his powerful hindquarters. He has a close lying double coat with a short dense soft undercoat and an outer coat that is harsh, dense and wiry. He comes in black, any shade of brindle, or wheaten like this. Let's have a closer look at the Scotty's most unique feature, his chest which is hung between his forelegs. So the forelegs can never be straight as they must follow the contour of the ribcage, causing the front feet to turn out just a little. Hence his unique digging action. These low slung dogs shift the dirt sideways and then slither into whatever hole they have made. The Scotty also uses its teeth and nose to help clear the way. This mode of digging is in sharp contrast to a normal digging action. The can and the West Highland White Terriers descend from the same basic stock, the hard haired Scotch Terrier. This terrier was bred for gameness and sporting instincts, to bolt foxes and small fur bearing vermin which lived in the rocky highlands. Its colour varied from the dark greys and brindles and through all shades of red and cream to nearly black. 
Opinions vary as to which terrier of Scotland was the oldest. However, it is unquestionable that the modern Cairn Terrier is the breed who has changed the least from his original sporting origins. Here you can see just how minimal the change in the Cairn has been over the century he has developed as a show dog. In contrast to the Scottish Terrier we have just seen, the Cairn has never become the victim of fashion and sculptured grooming. Instead, he has retained his natural appearance not only by virtue of his coat, but also by his medium length of body and medium length of leg. Even his head has not changed dramatically, except for neater ears and the foreface becoming a little shorter. The modern Cairn Terrier is a breed that has remained unexaggerated in any way. His weather resistant coat adds to this natural workmanlike appearance. His head has a decided indentation between the eyes with a definite stop. As the Cairn was bred to work in Scotland's Rocky Highlands, he has a medium length of leg and, for stability, his front feet may turn out just a little. His tail is neither high nor low set and, like all the terriers of Scotland, is never docked. Sharing common origin with the Cairn, the West Highland White Terrier originated as one specific pack of terriers which hunted foxes, otters and other fur-bearing vermin who lived in the rocky highlands of Scotland's west coast. It was Colonel Malcolm of Poltaloch who specifically selected white terriers after his beloved red dog was accidentally mistaken for a fox and shot. This is one of Colonel Malcolm's packs with pairs of terriers coupled together by a chain. An inexperienced terrier joined to an experienced one. He selected game terriers with enormous pluck to squeeze between the rocks in search of their prey. He believed a short muzzle, like that of a fox, was just as strong as the elongated jaw of the Scotty. He also selected terriers whose front feet turned out a little as these gave the terrier better balance and stability when scrambling over the steep rock faces. He also regarded the thick undercoat, like fur, essential not only to keep the working terrier warm in chilly highlands, but also to keep the skin dry both in the rain and when the terrier hunted through streams. Let's now watch the West Highland White develop from a terrier quite similar to the Cairn into today's compact, strongly built show dog. Over time, the body shortened, the tail became higher set and the coat was subjected to more and more trimming and sculpturing techniques. His head became more exaggerated and broader with a much more distinct stop.
formed by heavy bony ridges immediately above the eyes. The modern Westie is an all-white terrier with farmnity appearance and great self-esteem. Although the hair on the head should be thick, modern stylizing often makes it difficult to determine just what is hair and what is dog. This is an excellent example of the Westie's unique head being correctly examined by a judge in the show ring. His head is carried at a right angle to the neck and not in an extended position. He moves with a free, straight and easy stride, but with the hindquarters close, the stifles and hocks being drawn under the body, giving drive. He stands around 11 inches tall. This Westie is enjoying agility at the World Dog Show. The sport of agility was based on show jumping for horses. The dog must negotiate the different obstacles in the shortest possible time. Here is a wire fox terrier negotiating a different course. Oh, he takes the wrong jump and is disqualified. But he just loves jumping, so goes over all the other jumps anyway. Now we have a Lakeland Terrier.